Hi everybody, Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master. Welcome back to this video series where I talk about different dilemmas in flap design for implants and I'm preparing you for the upcoming webinar on the best implant flap designs coming up soon. And in this video, I'm going to talk about implant uncovering and some of the thought process that is behind the ways to uncover an implant. Okay, there are different ways to do that and I would love for you to know this as well. So if you didn't watch the previous videos, go back and watch them. There are two more videos that talk about the implant flap dilemma, some of the thought process behind it, and I showed you how I place an implant for a two-stage approach. I showed you the zebra flap and explained why it earned the name zebra flap because the different stripes in the flap with different tissue qualities. Some doctors call it simply the Z flap. And the idea was to bypass the poor tissue quality that was on top of the ridge, start with good tissue quality, reflect the flap, place an implant, and then facilitate the suturing in the primary closure. Now, because this implant is submerged or placed in a two-stage approach, the, this patient's dentist, Dr. Glassman, was able to bond the original crown back to the adjacent teeth. And now we are in a holding pattern for several months until the implant integrates and ready to be uncovered. The question now is, what is the best way to uncover the implant? Uh, it is a dilemma for me because there is a slight discrepancy in the tissue height between the central incisors. There's a slight loss of the interproximal tissue uh, that we anticipated uh, actually from the get-go uh, prior to placing the implant, which is uh, very important and very helpful, in my opinion, uh, to be able to predict these deficiencies ahead of time. Now, generally speaking, there are three main ways to uncover an implant. Number one, using a punch or a circular incision, basically without reflecting a flap, uncovering or removing a plug of tissue just on top of the cover screw. The second option is to make an actual incision uh, either in the middle of the crest or more to the palate and mobilize the tissue in a buckle direction, uh, most of the time with vertical releasing incisions when it, when it comes to the aesthetic zone. And sometimes we graft at the same time or we use some extension of the flap from the palate and roll it under the flap. This is called the palatal roll or the modified palatal roll. Again, in an attempt to increase tissue volume. The challenge here is that the tissue quality is very poor. If you remember from video one, that was the same challenge uh, that uh, basically led me to create the zebra flap. We're, <laughs> we're facing the same challenge right, right now because I'm limited in what I can do with the flap in terms of mobilizing it, manipulating it, because any manipulation, first of all, can cause tearing and perforation, but there's really not much to manipulate. In order to move tissue to the buccal direction, or to create the modified palatal roll, you really need to have some tissue to work with that is not as fragile. So the only way, at least in my view, to improve tissue quality is leave the ridge without any pressure, let the tissue mature and thicken up, and only then uncover the implant. Of course, we can also resort to connective tissue grafting and we need to find a way to have a patient having a tooth in place without touching the ridge. So it really adds to the complexity of this uh, case. And I considered all options and looking at the patient's smile line and considering all the pros and cons, possible risks, complications and costs, I felt it was reasonable to choose the punch approach. And in that way, uncover the implant, removing all this hyperemic tissue immediately and shorten the treatment time. And I know for a fact that this approach will not compromise the papilla, which is also very, very critical in every aesthetic case. Now, you cannot choose the punch approach if you have a significant deficiency of poor tissue quality and it's all visible because the soft tissue deficiency will carry on to the implant restoration and that will compromise the aesthetics of the whole case. So how do we uncover? Uh, one option is to use a dedicated punch, which creates a circular incision. And try not to throw away your surgical guide. In this case, it's a computer guide. I always keep my guides uh, throughout the treatment. So the punch itself 
fits the circumference of the tube inside the guide. And that allows me to create a very accurate circular incision exactly where the implant was placed. Remember, this implant was computer guided into its final position. So by punching through the original tube, the excision of tissue is very minimal, very accurate. And the healing is quick, allowing the dentist to place a provisional immediately and start the restorative process uh, relatively quickly after. Now, the slight tissue discrepancy between the two central incisors was not that detrimental in my opinion. Uh, Rick did an awesome job converting the original crown into a screw-retained implant crown to allow for some healing and molding of the tissue until a final restoration was fabricated. Now, looking back at the two-stage approach and the punch uncovering and looking at the restorative process, there's no doubt there could have been some other ways to handle this case. Uh, for example, placing the implant with an immediate provisional, not needing to manipulate a flap and uh, going through an uncovering process. And that probably would have worked out well. Uh, but really, ultimately, uh, what matters the most is the patient's satisfaction. So we may not have done an immediate implant or an immediate provisional, but I got immediate pleasure by reading this patient's text message expressing his happiness with the outcome. And I would so love it for you to receive the same feedback after you treat patients. And all of this is possible. All you need to do is look at the case very carefully, analyze it, look at all the different possible problems and deficiencies, find solutions for these problems, and operate in a safe and a conservative way. And being knowledgeable in flap design is going to be very helpful to you. So thanks, Rick, for referring this really nice patient. Thanks for our collaboration. I think it turned out great. And I look forward to seeing you in the next webinar on the best implant flap designs where I'm going to show you different techniques of handling the soft tissues, different flap design dilemmas and uncovering dilemmas and show you how to maximize the soft tissue aesthetics around your implants. If you found this series useful, feel free to share it with other dentists. Feel free to post it on social media and I look forward to seeing you at the webinar. Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master. So you created this great implant site and you're ready for the procedure. And now you're a little bit insecure about what is the best way to handle the soft tissue during the surgery. Should you reflect the flap? Should you go flapless? Should you preserve the papilla? And if yes, what is the best way to do it? And in general, what is the best way to handle the soft tissue in a particular implant case? If you have these questions, you're not alone. Many doctors are a little bit insecure and have many dilemmas when it comes to the soft tissue handling around dental implants. I'd like to invite you to a webinar that will answer all of these questions and will help you to be better in soft tissue management during implant surgery. I'm going to talk about what I think are the best ways to handle the soft tissue during implant surgery go to surgicalmasterwebinar.com to sign up. Once you sign up, you'll get a confirmation and some additional information and resources that will prepare you for the webinar so you can maximize your learning experience. In this webinar, I'm going to talk to you about the different soft tissue techniques that I use in my practice. I'm going to talk to you about flapless surgery and what is the best way to do that, but I'm also going to give you some options for flaps and the exact incision outline. I'd like to make it very useful and practical for you so you can apply it in your practice. To sign up, go to surgicalmasterwebinar.com. All you need is an internet connection, a computer, a tablet, or a phone, and you're in. I'm going to show you how all of this works, and I know this is going to be very useful and practical to you. I'll see you at the webinar on the best implant flap designs. See you then.